Hello and happy Tuesday, everybody. This is Joelle Anthony, also known as the Grave Woman, and I am honored to be speaking on the phone with Mr. George Frankel, co-founder and CEO of Eternal Reef. Eternal Reefs. Mr. George, how are you doing tonight? Very well, thanks, Joelle. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and jump right in. Can you please tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your educational background, and how long you've been in business? Well, uh, I originally was from metropolitan New York area, grew up there, went to school there. I uh, was in the banking industry for a number of years. I moved to Atlanta, still in the banking industry. Uh, spent about eight years there and then left banking and founded a uh, automobile admission inspection company uh, based in Atlanta. Ultimately, uh, one of the folks that I worked with in the automobile admission business was one of the founders of the design of the reef ball that we ended up using for eternal reefs. And the, what he did was one day, I, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but uh, I was an operations manager in banking for about 20 odd years. And then I ran Georgia mission testing in, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia for about 10 years and then evolved into eternal reefs. Um, got X amount of college and other than that, everything has just been, uh, you know, what you learn as you go along. Okay, so how long have you all been in business with Eternal Reefs? Eternal Reefs was started in 1999, and so we're actually in business now. This is our 21st year. Okay, so what made you to want, what made you decide that you wanted to be involved in the funeral service industry? Okay, first thing I'll say is that we, from the very beginning, have never felt as though we were, in fact, a part of the funeral service industry. We're rebuilders. That's what our core competency is. Okay. Um, part of our organization, the Reef Ball Foundation, along with Reef Innovations, build reefs in over 70 countries around the world for a variety of purposes. So what really happened was we took a look at the idea being, can you use memorialization in order to create a methodology by which you can do more work to preserve and protect the marine environment? Uh, it was interesting because Don Brawley, who was working with me in the Eternal Reefs, in the uh, Georgia Mission business, uh, was one of the founders of that design. And it was his father-in-law who got sick, who knew his time was limited, and said to Don that when his time came, he would much prefer to be in one of Don's reefs with all that life in action than being in a field with a bunch of old dead people. <laughs> and sense. so it was an interesting time in my life my mother's life was winding down, and my brother had just been diagnosed as terminal. My brother, my mother was going to be the last person that went into our family cemetery plot in New York. My brother lived in Houston. I lived in Atlanta. And, so, and we didn't have any real family connections with any other place other than where we were living. So as soon as Don said you know, that he needed to do this for his father-in-law, it made all the sense in the world to me. And I simply said, when you come back, you know, we got to sit down and talk about this. And that was really where we came from, the idea of, of using reef, using memorialization to create new artificial reefs for protecting the marine environment. Okay. Well, would you consider there to be a spiritual aspect or inspiration behind the types of products and services that you all offer? I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, to begin with, I cannot begin to count how many families really in their own mind and directly to us reference this as the circle of life, the ashes to ashes, the dust to dust. And when people see the amount of new life and um, marine uh, life, life uh, organisms that these reefs produce and preserve, it, it absolutely is amazing what's being done. So there's a tremendous spiritual connection with the entire process. And part of it is the fact that we have the families involved in the making of the reef. So they bring their loved ones cremated remains, they mix some concrete and the remains together, they personalize the reef with hand prints and written messages. And at the end of the process, this is a lot more than their mother or their father's memorial. This has now become the tribute to their mother or father's life that they make with their own hands. And so they take ownership, and they take ownership of every part of the process, including what happens after these reefs are on the bottom. 
So there's a tremendous spiritual aspect to this whole thing. Okay. So how much does it cost to become an Eternal Reef? It ranges. Um, we have a, uh, an offering where nobody from the family is planning on being involved. And that is uh, $2,495. Okay. We have our, our Aquarius Reef, uh, which is usually used for one person and maybe their pets. Uh, and that's $3,995. The Nautilus, uh, which is the reef that we generally use for two people, and again, family pets if they wish to put, include them, is $4,995. And then we have the largest reef, which we can actually include four sets of remains into, um, is $7,495. And we can't offer that in all of our locations. How many locations do you all have? We work out of 14 different uh, reef sites right now, and because everything, because we're reef builders and everything that we do is permitted, we cannot guarantee location in advance of need. So what we tell everybody is at the time of need, we'll work with the family to, to make it the most appropriate reef site available. And we work everywhere right now from Atlantic City in New Jersey to Galveston, Texas. So we cover a fair amount of the Gulf and the Atlantic. And again, when people see the contribution these reefs make, it really is just a very positive process. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned your 14 sites. Are you all international, or is it just something that's offered in the U.S.? This is just something that's offered in the U.S. right now. Okay. Do you plan to go international? We do. Um, there are an awful lot of logistical issues with what we do, and there are an awful lot more regulatory issues that we have to address. And we're still a small organization. Uh, we are 501c3, so that does help with a lot of the, uh, dealing with a lot of the regulatory issues. But we're a small company, and we really kind of have to grow step by step. Okay. Now, once someone has been embalmed, because a lot of times people choose to be embalmed for um, the purpose of viewing by their family, can they still be cremated and become a part of the coral reef through eternal reefs? They can absolutely still be cremated and become part of uh, one of our one of the reefs. That's not a problem from our standpoint. We are post cremation, um, so the family does what the family thinks is most appropriate all the way through, and when they're ready to work with us, is when we're more than happy to be ready to work with them. Okay, so there's no time limit on how long the family has after cremation to decide. Absolutely, absolutely not, and that and that's really one of the advantages of cremation all by itself is. There's no urgency to do something. It's not like you really have to get the body in the ground in a certain amount of time. The family can schedule a whole bunch of events. There's no Chinese fire drill, and people can hold on to the remains until they're ready to let go of them. So there's a, a, a lot of value just to the idea of cremation above and beyond the coral reefs. Okay. Why is the number of cremains that can be placed into one eternal reef pearl or ball um, limited to four? Well, it's got two factors. One is we uh, use the cremated remains in place of sand in the concrete. So there's a structural issue that we have to keep in mind. Okay. And then there is a pure weight issue. Um, these reef balls are designed to last over 500 years. The concrete is special pH neutral formula concrete with added strength. But we're still talking about adding a significant amount of weight. So we've made these arbitrary decisions. Uh, not to say that they couldn't be changed later on, but our, just from a safety, comfort feeling, this is really where we kind of felt it was most appropriate. Okay. Now, is your company associated with uh, Memorial Reefs and the Neptune Society Reef Memorial? No. Um, the Neptune Society is owned by SCI, the large corporate uh, funeral service company. Mm -hmm. Their only location is Key Biscayne, Florida, and we function very differently. They are much more in uh, a uh, unattended type of a program. Okay. Where, whereas we really do focus on involving the family. Okay. Now, um... The other, there is one other big difference, and that is whatever structure they've got down there is now all the uh, environmental contribution that they're going to make until they put more structure down. But every time we build a new memorial, every time we put a new uh, eternal reef on the bottom, we've just added new habitat. So ours is incrementally growing every time we do a new project. 
Now, is there a certain area that you can, I guess, drop the balls um, in? Or are you limited to where in the ocean you can implant your reefs? Uh, absolutely. We work with the different reef coordinators from the different states and in Florida in the different counties. And every single thing that we do is permitted, and it goes through a variety of federal, state, and local agencies. Mm -hmm. Everything we do has to be reported before we do it, and it has to be reported after the project is done. Okay. So it's a very heavy, and, and what will happen is the reef coordinator will actually be the one who assigns us the specific coordinates where these particular memorials are going to be placed. Now, how are those coordinates um, allocated? That's simply done arbitrarily by the reef coordinator. They've got a designated site with a certain amount of size in it, and they've decided this is where they'd like to see us build one of our patch reefs. Okay. Now, these reefs are monitored, correct? They are monitored, yes. Can they become damaged? Of course. Um, you know, we're talking about being in the marine environment. Uh, they, are, they are protected from a regulatory standpoint in that nobody else is going to put material there. But that doesn't mean that somebody may not drive, you know, drag an anchor through a site. I mean, the same damage that can happen to a natural reef can happen to an artificial reef. Okay. So if they are damaged, what is the protocol for reconstructing or replacing them? What insurance does the family have that their loved one will be taken care of or safe in the sea? Fortunately, we've never had that issue that we've had to address it, and it'll be done simply on a case-by-case -case basis. We have to take a look and see what actually happened and what the opportunity is to repair it, or maybe it may be better off being left the way it is. Um, you know, there's just there are too many unknowns. Okay. Um, do you offer any full-body uh, sea burial options or foresee offering those services in the future? No. No, we're reef builders. That's our competency. That's who we are. That's who we want to be. We're the best reef builders in the world. Okay. Um, so I, I have a wild card question for you. What makes you get up every morning and say, I love what I do and I want to keep doing it and offering my services to others? The best answer I can give to you is have anybody who wants to look at our Facebook fan page and read the comments from our families and fans. Um... There is just a real sense of personal accomplishment when these families get done working with us in the project, and they really leave feeling like they've done something good, and, and that's the best feeling in the world that any of us working at Eternal Reefs or Reef Innovations or the Reef Ball Foundation can ask for. So it's really very easy to get up in the morning. Okay. Um, and one of my last questions is, um, what do you want done with your remains once you pass away? I have every intention of being an eternal reef. Okay. Um, and for those who are interested in becoming an eternal reef, um, Mr. George, where can they find more information other than your Facebook fan page about your company, um, Eternal Reefs, and exactly what it is that you guys do? It is the best place to go is our website, www.eternalreefs, like reefsintheocean.com. And we build memorials that preserve and protect the marine environment for future generations. Uh, that's like we are the best reef builders in the world and we really look forward to watching these families get involved and learn more about the marine environment and what their loved ones can do for eternity. Well, thank you so much, Mr. George. I have truly enjoyed talking to you. I appreciate your time and I hope that your recovery continues to go well. Thank you very much, Joel. I appreciate it and thank all your audience. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh -huh.